Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Italic. This is Suat Italic from Turkey, I believe. And let's see, are we going to get a Grunfeld or King's Indian? Looks like it'll be a Grunfeld. Just proceed down one of these main roads. Italic. I think I played him more in the five minute pool than the three minute pool. So, quite a good rating that he has. Play bishop e3 here. Just try to reinforce my center pawn. I can't tell if he's lagging or if I'm lagging. I think it's him, but I'm not sure. Uh, queen a5. Do I just play queen d2 against that? I assume so. Now, do I go rook b1 or rook c1 here? I can't quite remember. I'll play rook b1. Threatening to go rook b5 if I get a chance. He plays b6, yep. Hmm. Just seeing if I can embarrass his queen somehow. I don't think so. Let's just develop. He can play rook d8 to pressure d4. I wasn't sure whether to put the bishop on d3 or e2 for that reason. Okay, so now, should I take or should I castle and allow him to potentially play that move? It's not a good decision either way. Not a nice one to have to make. Okay, I'll just castle. Even though I'm allowing him to take now. If pawn takes, I'll take with, I don't know, probably the knight. I think knight is best. Yeah, let's take with the knight. Who is lagging here? His time is like not moving. Yeah, he's lagging. My connection is pretty fast. But I don't think it penalizes him on time. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's not penalizing him on time at all. Hmm. Yeah, his, uh, his connection, you guys can't see it because I was doing it in the console below. But it was uh, 9,214 milliseconds. <laughs> That's a lot of lag. Maybe now it is. I'm catching up on time. Okay, queen a4. Hmm. I feel like I should play rook b4 or something. I don't want him to be able to play knight c6 so easily. So let's do that. Try to keep the pressure on. You can play queen d7 now, though. Takes the pawn instead. Okay. What about this now? Eh, that might not have been such a good move. I'm trying to get my rook to c7. But, yeah, I don't know about that move that I just played. Now he's threatening knight c5. Okay, let's go here. Try to threaten to take on e7. I feel like I'm stopping and starting in this game <laughs> just because of his connection problems. Knight c6 was almost mandatory because knight c5 is a big issue. His queen is cut off. I feel like I should be able to take advantage of that somehow. But I don't think my, my rook is positioned so well, to be honest. Should I try to cut this bishop out of the game? Yeah, let's do that. Take that guy out of commission. Maybe I can swing my rook over to h4 somewhere down the line. He has a hard time moving here. I bet I'll play king h8. Yeah, trying to free himself a little bit. Oh, what to do now? Let's just go h4. Make an attacking gesture with h5. Now that his king's on h8, h5 is a more annoying move for him to face. His time is, is really hurting, I think, because of this, this lag he's experiencing. I'm going to ping him again. Well, now his leg's okay. 
G4. G4 is probably a little too aggressive. Let's go Rook D1 first. He's got to hustle now. He doesn't have time to do much. Okay, I'm just going to throw stuff at him. He has B5, doesn't he? Um, okay. So if take there... This is a problem. I'm gonna try to invade and do some stuff. He can take on g4 with check. <laughs> this is a bad game now. Fortunately, he has very little time. Check. So that's kind of what I'm banking on now. The time situation. Uh, uh let's just do this. Check. Mm -hmm. We'll try to stay solid. Yeah, there's not much to be done for his time situation. All right, so I got pretty lucky in that one because he was clearly experiencing some connection problems. But um, yeah, I mean, you got to have a strong connection if you're going to play in the, the three-minute pool. Probably just a freak thing. Is this really the Turkish flag? Vatican City. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't recognize that as Turkey's flag. Um... Okay, let's look at this real quick, because I'm not sure I played this correctly. Rook b1. My memory of this line might be eluding me, but I think rook b1 and rook c1 are both moves here for white. And rook b1 menaces rook b5. I'm just not quite sure how to react to b6. I mean, I could follow through with... Uh, "Quote unquote threat and play rook b5." But let's see what the engine suggests. It says rook b5, queen a4, rook b3. Go back and maybe try to play bishop b5. But yeah, he has bishop a6 again. This is okay for him. Hmm. So I played bishop d3. I'm not sure that's the best space for the bishop. Maybe bishop e2 is better. But even if I play bishop e2, he can still, for instance, play. Bishop a6, and if castles, I might have a similar issue, like he can take on d4, or perhaps take on e2 and then grab on c3. He might be able to do that as well. So, frankly, I'm just not sure which way I should go with my bishop here, hmm, if I'm going to develop it at all. So, bishop d3 here, now castle, yeah, and he took... I didn't like the decision I had to make, but I didn't want to take on a6 because I thought queen takes and I'd have trouble castling. So that's why I didn't go for that. Hmm. So bishop d3 here, and then he gets to capture, and now he has a superior pawn structure to me. Take queen a4. I thought this looked a little strange. I think the engine was suggesting... A paradoxical move. Bishop takes d4, giving up his good dark square bishop with the intention of continuing after this to trade and then just develop the knight to c6. And even though he's parted with the traditionally good Grunfeld bishop, he makes up for it in my structural weaknesses and his easy development too. So it prefers black by uh, a pretty large margin here. It's an interesting line. So we got this position. I might have just enough compensation. Rook c4 was really sketchy, though. I don't, I don't like that move. I was trying to prevent his queen from coming back somehow. But actually, like, his queen can't go anywhere here anyways. At the moment, I have everything covered. I actually thought queen a6 might be a problem in this position, just pinning my rook. But he developed the knight to a6, and after knight c6, I, I dominate the middle of the board. So it's kind of a weird position. King h8. Yeah, king h8 is good because he can't bring a rook to the c file with the king standing on g8 for fear of knight e7 with a fork, so he has to prepare that. I just wasn't sure what to do. Like here I really wanted to play g4 and just brute force attack him, 
But I was concerned he would do this and then play queen d5 and always be able to simplify. This knight's hanging, but he can take here. I guess the computer doesn't like that so much for him, but on principle, I wanted to prevent the queen from coming back. It's hard to let go of an idea like that once you've already played a, a strange-looking move. You feel like you have to justify that move. So I was like, I'm going to keep my rook on c4 so his queen can never come back in the action. Just kind of a foolish stance, but... Yeah, g4. I mean, I was kind of playing off his time at this point. I'd... Knight c5 was a very good move. So my g4 was desperation. Yeah, rook d2 looks much more sensible. Just harass his queen a little bit. But knight c5 was a great move by him, because if I take with my bishop, he takes here, and my bishop's pinned. If it moves, I would lose the rook on c4. He'd be double attacking it. So, knight c5, for all intents and purposes, should win the game for him. It's just due to his time situation, I was able to Check. swindle a victory, because he had less than 10 seconds. Check. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Eh, nice to get a swindle every once in a while, I guess. <laughs> and I'll be back with one more game today. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.